Being at ease with not knowing is crucial for answers to come to you. Hello everyone, my name's Elspeth, welcome to the Planeswalker Pantheon, and today we are opening up a collector's box of the latest Magic the Gathering set, The Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Let's get into it, shall we? There we go. Just had pre-release weekend, it was great fun. It's a good, It's going to be a fun set, I think. Alright, let's get into this box. We have, of course, our box topper, and this hope, let's hopefully not forget to open it this time like I nearly did with the set box. We have our oh, packs. We don't need this box in the way. And I mean, you don't really need to see the packs, you know what I'm opening. You saw me open the box itself. But let's get into it, shall we? Got our commons, our uncommons, so commons, uncommons, pretty foil land, Bartolome de Presito in the alternate artwork. We have Creature of the Schism, two in a black for a creature vampire cleric, it's a 2 4 death touch. When it attacks the player of the most life or tied for the most life, create a 1 1 white vampire creature token with lifelink. And when the preacher attacks while you have the most life or tied for the most life, you draw a card and you lose a life. We have Matsalani the Great Door, three mana for a legendary out of that. Tap to draw a card and discard a card. Four tap, transform the, transform the door. I debate if there are four more permanent types among cards in your graveyard. Where it becomes the core. With Fathomless Descent, tap to add X mana of any one colour where X is the number of permanent cards in your graveyard. You have Dusk Legion Sergeant. One to black for a creature vampire soldier. Two two with menace. Sacrifice the sergeant. Each non-token vampire creature you control gains persist until end of turn. We have Throne of the Grim Captain, two mana for a legendary artifact, tap to mill two cards, craft with a dinosaur, a merfolk, a pirate, and a vampire, and four. For four, where it becomes the Grim Captain, seven mana for a menace, trample, lifelink, hexproof, skeleton, spirit, pirate. When it attacks, each opponent sacrifices a non-land permanent, then you may put an exiled creature card used to craft the Grim Captain onto the battlefield under your control, tapped and attacking. Ooh, we got a Jurassic park swamp there we have a abuelo's awakening x3 in white for a sorcery return target artifact or non or enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield with x plus one plus one counters on it it's a one one spirit creature token with flying in addition to its other types and vampire tokens on both sides yeah that'll work i think Next one up. I think they fixed up the uh, the packs. Those are, these are actually a lot easier to open. Go to commons. Cute foil frog boy. Commons. Uncommons. Pretty island. Oh, we have a. Uh, full extended art, sorry, full art, Earthshaker Dreadmore in foil. Four and two, I mean, I don't need to read that, it's an uncommon. Got the treasure map, two mana for an artifact, tap one and tap to scry one, put a landmark counter on it, then if there are three more landmark counters, remove those counters, transform the treasure map, and create three treasures. Where it becomes the treasure cove, tap to add a colors, and tap sacrifice a treasure to draw a card. We literally just had an Abuelo's Awakening, I'm not reading it a second time. Tributary Instructor, three and a green for a creature, Merfolk, Shaman, four, four with Mentor. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one, plus one cannon on it dies, draw a card. Oh, we have Molten Collapse, black and a red for a sorcery. Choose one. If you descended this turn, you may choose both instead. Destroy target creature or planeswalker, or destroy target non-creature, non-land permanent with mana value one or less. <gasps> We've got, welcome to... 
um, for one two green uh, for an enchantment saga. For each opponent, up to one target non-creature artifact they control becomes a zero four war artifact creature with defender for as long as you control the saga. Second chapter has you create a three three green dinosaur token with trample and gains haste until end of turn. And three, destroy all walls, exile the saga, then return to the battlefield transformed under your control where it becomes Jurassic Park. Legendary land. Each dinosaur card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is equal to the card's mana value plus exile three other cards. And tap to add green for each dinosaur you control. Oh, that's cool. That's Calamax the Storm Sire as part of our special guest slot from Ixalan. Appropriate um, card, actually. One green, blue, and red. Legendary creature, elemental dinosaur. It's a 4 4. When you cast your first instant, instant spell this turn, if Kalanax is is tapped, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy, and whenever you copy an instant spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Kalamax. That's nice. And we've got a map and a gnome soldier. The um the um gnome soldier, perhaps. <laughs> that was a bad jerk, even for me. I apologize. That was, that was a little bit in poor taste. Alright, our commons. Baby Gishath. Uncommons. Pretty Forest. Zora Lava Tongue in the Alt Art. Souls of the Lost. One and a black for a creature spirit. It's a star slash star x plus one. It's an initial cost to cast a spell. Discard a card or sacrifice a permanent. And its power is equal to the number of permanent cards in your graveyard and its toughness is equal to that number plus one. Deep Fathom Echo. Two green and blue for a creature merfolk spirit. It's a 4-4. Four, four. Being of combat on your turn, it explores. Then you may have it become a copy of another creature you control until end of turn. Wait up, train a prodigy, red, green, and white for a legendary creature human warrior, one five with haste. Turn a green and tap to have target creature you control fight another target creature. This ability costs two two less to activate for um, targets two creatures you control. If a creature you control being dealt damage causes an ability trigger the ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So it's enrage harmonicon. We got Resplendent Angel. I love the style of artwork that they went with these. So one and two white for a creature angel. It's a three three with flying. At the beginning of each end step, if you gain five or more life this turn, create a four four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. And three and triple white, white until end of turn. It gets plus two plus two on lifelink. Ooh, Grim Gigantosaurus. Five black and green for a creature dinosaur. 10-10 ten, ten with monstrosity 10 for 10 and black and green. It costs one less to activate for each creature with power f- uh, four or greater your opponent's control. And when it becomes monstrous, destroy all artifacts and creatures other than the Grim D- Gigantosaurus. Uh, Jade Light Splunker, X and a green for a creature merfolk scout. It's a 1-1 one, one, and when it enters the battlefield, it explores X times. Dinosaur egg and a dinosaur. Next on up. Alright. Commons, uncommons. Pretty planes. We have Dargo the Shipwrecker already in our special guest slot. Six and a red for a legendary creature giant pirate. It's a seven five. As an additional cost to cast a spell, you may sacrifice any number of artifacts and or creatures. The spell costs two less to cast for each permanent sacrifice this way, and two less to cast for each other artifact or creature you sacrifice this turn. Trample and partner. Akal Bakal, first among equals. Two and a blue for a legendary creature human advice. It's a 1 5. The beginning of each player's end step, if an artifact entered the battlefield under your control this turn, with the top two cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, the other into your graveyard. We have the Enigma Jewel. It's a mythic. Single blue for a legendary artifact, enters the battlefield tapped. Tap to add two colors, spend this man to only activate abilities. Craft with four more non lands with activated abilities for eight and a blue. Where it becomes a Locus of Enlightenment, a legendary artifact. It has activated abilities of, of of the exiled cards used to craft it. 
may activate each of those abilities once each turn. Whenever you activate an ability that's, in, that's not a mana ability, you copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. Alter of the Wretched. Two and a black for an artifact. Into the battlefield, you may sacrifice a non-token creature. If you do draw X cards, then mill X cards where X is that creature's power. Craft with one or more creatures for two and two black, and two and a black return it from your graveyard to your hand, where it becomes... Wretched Bone Mass. It's a creature skeleton horror with with power and toughness equal to the total power of exiled cards used to craft it. Uh, when it has flying, as long as it has the exiled card has flying, the same is true for first strike, double strike, death touch, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, protection, reach, trample, and vigilance. Oh boy. We have Wall of the Forgotten, blue and a black for a sorcery, descend eight. Choose one. If there are eight or more permanents in your graveyard as you cast a spell, choose one or more instead. Return, tar return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Target opponent discards a card and look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. We have the splitting, spitting di Dilaphosaurus. Two and a black for a creature dinosaur, it's a 3-2. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, put a minus one, minus one count on up to one target creature. Creatures your opponent's control with a minus one, minus one counters on them can't block. We have a foil, uh, full art, Restless Reef. It's a land, enters battlefield tapped, tap for blue and black. And for two blue and black, until end of turn, it becomes a 4-4 four, four blue and black shark with death touch. It's still a land, and when it attacks, target player mills four. Gnome and Fungus. Next one up. Alright, we've got our commons. And then our uncommons. Pretty Swamp. Belligerent Yearling in the alt art. Terratide, two and two black for a sorcery with fathomless descent. All creatures get minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of permanent cards in your graveyard. Threefold Thunder Hulk. Try saying that multiple times fast. Seven mana for an artifact creature gnome. It's a zero zero. It enters with three plus one plus one counters on it. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, create a number of one one gnome artifact creature tokens equal to its power. Two sacrifices and another artifact. Put a plus one plus one counter on the, the, the Thunder Hulk. Mist Dancer. Four and a blue for a creature Merfolk Wizard. Three throw flying. Other Merfolk you control get plus one plus one and has flying. And you can encore it for five and two blue. We have Amelia Benavides Aguia. White and a black for a legendary creature Vampire Scout. Two two. Ward pay three life. Whenever you gain life, um, she explores. Then destroy all other creatures if its power is exactly 20. Ooh, Jurassic Park Forest. We have Abuelo As Ancestral Echo. One white and blue for a legendary creature spirit. Two two with flying and ward two. One white, exile another target creature or artifact you control. Return to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Oh, I thought Transform forgot a... Ooh, got Jurassic Park treasure there. And Angel. Next one up. Alright, skip through commons. Jeez. Every time, the more need I try to make these piles, the less needed they become. Our uncommons. Pretty Island. Aquali the Seeding Tower in Foil Altar. We have the Ancient One, blue and a black for a legendary creature, Spirit God. It's an 8 8 with Descend 8. Um, it can't attack or block unless there are 8 or more permanent cards in your graveyard. And for 2 blue and a black, draw a card, then discard a card. When you discard a card this way, target player mills equal to its mana value. Bedrock Tortoise, this thing is fun. 3 and a green for a 06 creature turtle. As long as it's your turn, creatures you control have hexproof. Each creature you control with toughness greater than its power assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Contest of Claws, one and a green for a sorcery. Tag creature you control deals combat damage, deals damage to its power to another to another creature. If XX damage is dealt this way, discover X where X is that excess damage. We have the Restless Prairie. 
it enters the battlefield tapped, taps for white and, gr- white and green, and for two green and white, it becomes a 3-3 green and white llama creature token until end of turn. When it attacks, other creatures control it at plus one, plus one until end of turn. Jurassic Park Foily Forest. We have, ooh, a extended art magmatic galleon. Three and two red for an artifact vehicle. It's a 5-5. Five, five. When it enters the battlefield, it deals five damage to target creature and opponent controls. Whenever one or more creatures your opponent's control are dealt excess non combat are dealt um, excess non-combat damage, create a treasure. Crew 2. And copy token. And my folk. Next one up. Oh, that your opponent's control. I misread that. Just then. Alright. Commons. Uncommons. Pretty mad. Utenbach, the great mistake in the old heart. We have a foil glowing lights of Vitlamok. Two and a green for a legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of the library in any order. The meaning of your end step, if you control four more creatures, transform growing rights. Into Illamok Cradle of the Sun. Tap to add green or tap to add green for each creature you control. Ah, oh, and another growing rights of Illamok. I'm not going to read that because we literally just went through it. Bronze Beak Foragers, 3 and a white for a creature dinosaur, it's a 3-4. When it enters the battlefield, for each opponent, exile up to one target non-land permanent that player controls until it leaves the battlefield. X and a white, put target card with mana valley, ex- exiled with um, Bronze Beak Foragers into its owner's graveyard, and you gain X life. Trumpeting Carnosaur, 4 and 2 red for a creature dinosaur, it's a 7-6. With Trample, when it enters the battlefield, disco- discover 5. Or for two and a red and discard it, it deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker. Jurassic Park Mountain. There's actually double side, which is neat. Oh, and we've got Oja Calcium. Kas- Jeez. Deepest growth in the Aztec alt art. Three and two green for a legendary creature god. It, it's a 6 5 with trample. It, when it deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library. You may put a creature card and or a land from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. When it dies, return it to the battlefield tapped and transformed under its own control. Where it's the Temple of Cultiva- Cultivation. Tap for green and for two and a green and tap, transform the temple. Activate only if you control ten or more permanents and only as a sorcery. Map and dinosaur. Next one up. Commons, and commons, pretty forest, thrashing Brontodon, best it's ever looked. Queen's Bay Paladin, three and two black for a creature vampire knight, it's a five four. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, return up to one target vampire card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. You lose life equal to its mana value. Stalactite Stalker. One black for a creature goblin rogue gets a one with menace. At the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on the stalker. To win a black, sacrifice a stalker. Target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn where X is its power. Altar of the Wretched, which we read before. Restless Reef, which we've read before. We got blue, the loyal raptor. Uh, two green and blue, legendary creature dinosaur. Partners with Owen Grady, Raptor Trainer. It's a 5 4. For each kind of counter on blue, each dinosaur you control enters the battlefield with a counter of that kind on it. We have Taran's Soul Cleaver. One mana for a legendary artifact equipment. Equipped creature has vigilance, and when another artifact or creature is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on the equipped creature. Equipped for two. Gnome, and ooh, dinosaur. Oh, it's a Jurassic Park dinosaur, too. I like that they're kind of mixing them up a little bit. And we've got commons, 
Uncommons, Pretty Swamp, Captain Storm in the Alt Art, got the Stalactite Stalker, which we read earlier, the Millennium Calendar, I mean, I guess I couldn't exactly call it the Mine Calendar, could they? One mana for a legendary artifact. Whenever you untap one or more permanents during your untap step, you put that many time counters on the calendar. Two untap to double the ca- time, uh, number of time counters on the Millennium Calendar. When there are a thousand or more counters on, on it, sacrifice it and each opponent loses a thousand life. Promise of Acolots. One and a black for an enchantment. It has um, a source, a, an adventure for two and a black called Foul Rebirth. Sacrifice a non-demon creature. If you do create a 4-3 black and white vampire demon token with flying, at the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a non-demon creature if you do populate. We've got another Oja Kassam, Deepest Growth, which we won't read again. Got a pretty... a, a Jurassic Park Swamp. And Hulking Raptor. Two and two green for a dinosaur, 5-3 with Ward 2. At the beginning of your pre-combat magic phase, add double green. Yeah, because that, that's never been dangerous before. Next one up. What was it? There was a siege from Khans of Tarkia that just added double green. If I rem- the green siege, I think, did that. Jeez, I can't remember. It's been a while. There's commons... Uncommons. Pretty Plains. Isquith, Firstborn of Gishath in the Alt Art. Tarion Soul Cleaver, which we've read before. Sentinel of the Nameless City. Two and a green for a creature, Merfolk, Warrior, Scout, three for with Vigilance. When enters the battlefield or attacks, create a map. March of the Canonized. X and two white for enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, create X11 white vampire creature tokens with lifelink. At the beginning of your upkeep, if your devotion to white and black is seven or greater, create a 4 3 white, uh, bl- white and black vampire demon creature token with flying. Oop. Oh, sugar. That's alright, we'll fix that up real quick. Akal Pakal, first among equals, which we've read before. Foil Spitting Diathosaurus, which we've read before as well. Okay, I opened a normal one of these in my set box. The foil just makes it look so much prettier. It's Quintorius Canned. Three red and white for a legendary planeswalker Quintorius. F- starts at four loyalty. Whenever you cast a spell from exile, it deals two damage to each opponent and you gain two life. Plus one to create a 3-2 red and white uh, spirit creature token. My- minus three to discover four. And minus six to exile any number of target cards from your graveyard. Add red for each card exiled this way. You may play those cards this turn. Oh, that's so pretty looking. Map and spirit. Next one up. All right. Commons. Uncommons. Pretty land. Nick is our current conductor. Whale of the Forgotten, which we've read before. This is actually, I think, the first time I've seen the normal artwork. Jeez. Corpses of the Lost. Two and a black for an enchantment. Skeletons you control get plus one, plus zero, and have haste. When it is battlefield, you create a 2 2 black skeleton pirate creature token. A beam your end step. If you descended this turn, you may pay one life. If you do, return it to its owner's hand. Curious Altasaur, 3 and a green for a 2-5 with Vigilance and Reach. Whenever a dinosaur you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Roaming Throne, 4 mana for an artifact creature golem, 4-4 four, four with Ward 2. When it is a battlefield, choose a creature type. Ren- Roaming Throne is the chosen type in addition to its other types. And if a triggered ability of another creature you control of the chosen type triggers, it triggers an additional time. So, Tribal Homicon. Or... Type. No, Kindred is actually the new word they're using now. Greta Park Plains. Ooh, and a foil echoing deeps. Uh, land, it's a land, it's a cave. You may have it enter the battlefield tapped as a copy of any land in a graveyard, except it's a cave in addition to its other types, and tap for colours. I completely forgot they changed the wording of uh, tri- what well, used to be tribal to kindred, which I actually honestly I like. There was talk of it being typal for a very long time, and that just didn't gel. 
but Kindred I can get behind. Last pack. Skipping the commons. Skipping through the uncommons. Pretty Island. Kapoki Sunhorn in the alt art. Dire Flail. One red for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two plus zero. Equipped for one. And you can craft artifact for three and two red. Where it becomes... Dire Blunderbust. Equipped creature gets plus three plus zero and has whenever this creature attacks, you may sacrifice an artifact other than the Blunderbust. When you do, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature. Equipped for one. And we literally just open one of these. The Indomitable. Two and two blue for a legendary artifact vehicle. It's a six six with trample. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, crew three. You may cast in the indomitable from your graveyard as long as you control three or more tapped pirates and or vehicles. The micro micro tyrant in the alt art. Kinda looks like um uh the villain from <sighs> Mr. Oogie Boogie. From um, Not Mid Before Christmas, a little bit in this artwork. Legendary creature Elder Fungus, Star South Trample. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control that are fungi and or saplings. The beginning of your end step, create X11 Black Fungus creature tokens with this creature can't block, where X is the number of times you descended this turn. <gasps> we got Owen! So we got Blue and Owen! I'm actually kind of happy with that. Uh, one. Red and green for a legendary creature, human soldier, scientist. 3-2, partners with blue. Tap to put a choice of a menace, trample, breach, or haste counter on target dinosaur. Activate only as a sorcery. And we've got big old carnage tyrant in foil. 4 and 2 green for a creature dinosaur. It can't be counted. Trample hexproof. And it's a 7-6. Treasure and a golem. Alright, just before we go, we got our... Box topper, and this is going to be a foil one because it's from the collector box. Right. I'm happy we got both blue and Owen. It wouldn't have felt right if we just got one of them. There we go, it's coming. Okay. And our box topper is. <gasps> That's a chalice of the void. It's the best one I think you'd open. XX for an artifact. It enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it. Whenever a player casts a spell with mana value equal to the number of charge counters, counter that spell. Ooh, that feels good. That's a good way to end that box. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I do this mostly for my entertainment, but if you're entertained by this as well, that's awesome. Don't forget to like, share, favorite, and subscribe. Let's people know that I exist, and I'm mostly opening this for my entertainment. But if you enjoyed it, feel free to do do all the thing do all the things. You can follow me on Twitter. Links are down below, and you can find me at the Planeswalker Pantheon on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.